Tamam bence ses güzel. Herkes de net duyabiliyor mu? Mikrofonları yaklaştırmam gerekecek. Teacher's voice. Anda... Evet. <gülüyor> Şu anda daha iyiydi sanırım. Okey. Tamam. Just uh, let's wait for mm -hmm. one minute. Maybe more people yeah. can uh, be online. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, mm -hmm. is it being recorded or should I record the session? Ah, Fethat Hocam, please can record it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Recording. And I will record it on my... So you are the whole... Okay, you can handle that now. Mm -hmm. As for my duty, I'm let me Hocam. introduce you to the rest of the audience now. Yes, by the way, if you think recorded, I didn't do anything. I think a co-host can also re record. Is that right? I didn't do anything, but it is being recorded now. Soralım. Ahmet. Evet hocam. Uh -huh. Ahmetciğim sen kaydediyorsun o zaman değil mi? Evet. İki tarafı da. Tamam teşekkür ederiz. Good. So welcome to the last session, last plenary of the day. Uh, Dr. Sedat Akayoğlu from uh, Bulabant Yüzet Baysal University will be talking about the changing roles of language teachers to maximize the student potential in online teaching platforms. Sedat Hocam, mm -hmm. if you're ready, we'll be okay. delighted to listen to you. Okay, uh, good timing. It's uh, uh, quarter to uh, seven. And uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me for ILTAC, uh, the second ILTAC conference. And uh, by the way, uh, you can hear me. I think it's clear now. Is it clear? Clear. Or I, should I? A bit louder, louder might be better, though. Okay. Okay then. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Gonjo Jan for inviting me, inviting me for this uh, key, uh, plenary speech. Uh, last year, it was the first ILTAR conference in in Antalya. And I, uh, I wish we could meet face to face, but uh, the conditions are completely different now. So uh, it's completely online. And I think uh, the organizing committee is uh, doing a good job while organizing this, while organizing these sessions. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say this. And today uh, I'm planning to talk about the changing goals of language teachers to maximize student potential in online teaching platforms. Uh, as we move to the online platforms, we have new roles. Actually, they are, they are not new roles, but some roles are uh, more apparent. Some roles are more important in online environments. So I, I will try to uh, talk about this with some samples. Uh, by the way, it is not a research study, uh, but I am work, I'm also working as IT coordinator of our department and IT coordinator of Faculty of Education at our own institution. So uh, I know the problems, I know the complaints of our uh, students. So this is somehow my experience, I can say that. And how it started, let's see that part, how we started this uh, period. Actually, it was the 12th of March, 2020, and it was a Thursday evening, you might remember that. It was dark and gloomy and we heard the news. Schools are closed for three weeks. Actually, we really thought that it was just for three weeks, but, uh, but it wasn't. And, oops, and nothing remains the same as in the old days. Everything changed a lot. We changed everything. We thought that in three weeks time, we will come back. We will go back to our uh, classes and we will teach in face-to-face -face classrooms. But uh, still we are waiting to hear some news about the about the schools, when, we, when uh, will it happen? Uh, and we will, we will see that in time, by the way, no one knows anything. And with this one, with this uh, event, we, we all move to online education, distance education. And also we call it as emergent distance education because we, we were not ready for that. It was just uh, 
for example, on Thursday morning, we didn't have any idea about this, but uh, in the evening, it, uh, all schools are closed and we are still waiting to open our institutions. And what has changed? Uh, we, we have face-to-face -face classrooms and online classrooms. I don't want to call them as traditional classrooms. I hate this uh, word, by the way. We have face-to-face -face classrooms like this one. We are the authority in the classroom. We are in front of the classroom. We, are, we have an eye contact with the students and we have the control in the classroom. For example, we can uh, allow some students to enter the classroom after we start the course, or uh, we can uh, make them, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we may warn them about their concentration. And if they do something that's, that disturb us, that interrupt us, we usually uh, complain about that. And actually we are, we were authority in the classroom. What about an online classroom? It is something like this. We are sitting in front of our uh, computers. Actually, we were expecting this. We have uh, a cup of coffee and we have the schedule for the courses. We have the course books. We, are, we were at home and we were expecting to see, we were, uh, we were expecting to see something like this. But in time, uh, it, has, uh, it turned out to be like this one. We, uh, we were sitting in front of the uh, computers but we were teaching profile photos. We, uh, there are many profile photos in our classrooms, and uh, there are many messages coming uh, from our email by email uh, and some messages on WhatsApp, and also in, uh, on other uh, communication uh, platforms. We, we always receive notifications, and actually it is uh, somehow burnout for teachers. And we, uh, we weren't expecting online platforms like this one, we were expecting uh, like this one. It, uh, we were uh, at the beginning of March, we uh, thought something like this, but at the end of the spring semester, this is uh, somehow different. And in online classrooms, while we are designing an online classroom, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we sit in front, of the, uh, in front of our computer and we have books, we have resources, and also we, we, we may have some uh, other devices like our iPad or uh, our mobile phones. And we expect to teach something like this, but the situation is somehow different. Uh, the students always, always ask questions. Teacher, I cannot hear you. Teacher, my webcam is not working, so I cannot turn it on. Teacher, you forgot the uh, record session. Teacher, your screen is not sharing. Uh, we always hear this kind of, uh, yeah. We always hear this kind of complaints to, uh, during the class, and this is, I also experienced this one uh, just right now. I, while I'm, I'm talking, uh, a microphone is unmuted and someone is talking, and I have to uh, interview in that uh, position. And also while we are teaching, for example, you are teaching and you are, it, it, it is the climax of your class, and someone says, student has entered the waiting room for this meeting. You should admit it or you should see the waiting room. This is also another, uh, another distraction. While you are uh, talking, while you are teaching, there's always uh, notifications like this. I'm a meeting of this in face-to-face -face classroom. For example, we are teaching in front of the classroom and someone knocks the door and says, there's someone waiting uh, outside. Uh, would you like to admit him or her? Okay, uh, and it, it seems like this. And at the end, we usually feel, uh, feel calm, and we we are lost in uh, in these online classes. And I, I can simply say that this is completely a cause. But we should keep in mind that keep calm and accept the cause. This is the way how online environments, how online courses, our online uh, platforms work. We always have the cause, and we have to uh, we have different ways of platform management, and we have different. Uh, norms in these uh, new platforms. For example, now I, I'm talking and I know that someone's, uh, some people are writing in the chat board. I, I also, yes, uh, yes. I also, uh, I'm also reading that. Uh, for example, uh, you will not experience this uh, at a plenary uh, speech. And the expectations from the teachers have reshaped the teacher's roles. And most of them are not most of the teachers are not comfortable with these new roles. 
these expectations from the institution, these expectations from the students, these all reshape the teacher's role. And uh, most of the teachers are not happy with these new roles. They are not comfortable. This is beyond their comfort zones. And uh, these roles, uh, at the beginning of the sem spring semester, some uh, teachers insisted on using their own roles and using their own uh, uh, uh, routines in, for the, in online classes, but and this wasn't the case. And uh, what are the reasons for this? Uh, why they, uh, they feel uncomfortable? Why? Because the first one is in-service teachers didn't take any courses on instructional technologies. They had a course like instructional technologies and material design, and, but most of the time, these courses were taught, were offered by the Department of Educational Sciences, and the, the applications, the websites, the tools were not discipline-based. And uh, I know the content of that course, for example, the history of educational technology, the history of instructional technology, who founded the, uh, found the internet, uh, and uh, the historical uh, facts about instructional technology, and also some theoretical background, but our, uh, our learners didn't have any course like this. And uh, at some institutions like ours, uh, if it is an elective course, they took some courses like computer assisted language learning, but if it is not uh, offered as an elective course, uh, the service teachers do not have any course uh, like instructional technology. And the second reason, it is not easy to change habits in language teaching. I don't know if I mentioned this uh, yesterday morning. It is quite difficult to change the habits. Uh, these teachers didn't learn English through instructional materials, uh, uh, ICT tools through, they didn't use technology while learning English. So they, they had difficulties while using technology in language classes. And what kind of habits uh, did, they, did they have? For example, I will not share my presentation with you. Take your notes. This is the uh, sentence we always hear from our professors. I don't want to share my presentation. I prepared it. I designed it. And you have to take some notes in the classroom. And also, you, can, you cannot record my uh, voice. It's illegal. OK, uh, the students accepted this. You cannot eat or drink anything in the classroom. You cannot enter the classroom after me turn your mobile phones off. These were the habits that we were uh, accustomed to in face-to-face -face classrooms. The teachers didn't share their presentations. They didn't uh, allow students to re record their voices. And also most of the teachers didn't allow their students eat or drink something. But now they are having breakfast in front, uh, in front of the teacher in online classrooms. They just turn off the webcam. And while they are having their breakfast, they can listen to you or you cannot enter the classroom after me. We always say this, but in online classes, actually, we uh, and uh, we cannot keep the attendance. Uh, for example, we always pay attention to attendance, but in mod, uh, in online classrooms, most of the time, you cannot keep the attendance, and it is quite difficult. And it actually, uh, the students uh, do not fail with NA. And also. The audience may not be only uh, your students in the classroom. Sometimes you, you are teaching and you thought that, you assume that you are teaching your students, but this may not be the case. There might, uh, there might be some other people in the room. Also, there might be, uh, your students might be listening to you in, uh, in an inter internet cafe. So your voice might be heard by other people. So uh, this is also disturbing for some teachers because it's about privacy. and Actually, you have to be ready to open your classroom door to everyone, whether their intention is good or bad. Sometimes you share your recordings, you share your course materials, but uh, the, your audience, the, the ones who reach your materials, uh, they, they might have a bad intention for that. So you should be ready for that. And also, uh, most of the time, as I said, uh, in uh, while you are teaching your uh, students, you thought that I'm teaching my students and my student is alone in the room and I am addressing my student. I ask some questions, but sometimes their parents might be together, might be uh, together in the same room. And this is a uh, classroom management at home. Uh, we may we may have this kind of 
situation uh, at, at home. So uh, we, uh, we are not uh, uh, certain who, whom we are teaching, whom we are talking. So this is also very disturbing for some teachers. This, this is quite difficult to get used to. And also, uh, uh, for the roles, when, uh, when, we, uh, when we are talking about the new roles uh, in online classrooms, we have some roles, but as I said before, these roles were also available, but uh, in online classrooms, in online settings, in distance education, these roles are more apparent and we have to, uh, we, we, we have to pay attention to these, these roles. For example, the first one is motivator. We are always talking about this, the teacher is the motivator in the classroom. And if you read the article uh, written in the 25th issue of TESOL quarterly, they say that in the first 25, uh, 25 years of TESOL, the most commonly studied uh, topic is motivation. We always try to keep our students' motivation at high level, and we try to motivate our students because we think that if we motivate our learners, learning will be much, uh, much easier and we will teach much more easily but most of the students are demotivated. But this motivation is not about the courses, not only for the courses, but also for the teachers. And there's an uncertainty. They don't know whether they will uh, continue in face-to-face -face classrooms in spring semester. They don't know what kind of tools they will use. Also, uh, uh, for example, uh, I am the uh, supervisor of the senior students, fourth year students, and for the last four or five years, uh, they have been living uh, away from their home and they, uh, they don't want to live with their parents. So these kind of problems might be uh, available at home and uh, some illnesses might be available. Some, their they might be living with their grandparents and they have some problems uh, because of this coronavirus. So uh, there, we have to motivate these students as much as possible. And this is not about just learning English or uh, for our courses. We also motivate uh, motivate them for their future, for their daily life. This is uh, this is one of the goals that we added in uh, online classrooms. And uh, sometimes the students might have limited facilities, like uh, the limited internet connection and devices. We always think that our students have their computers. We are teaching, we ask them to uh, reply, and also we ask them to turn their webcams on, uh, or we have to ask them to mute, the, uh, unmute their microphone and talk in the classroom, but they might have limited internet connection. For example, this one. Have you ever thought that uh, you are teaching this kind of students? Here, let me see this picture. Uh, actually, it is an unfortunate uh, picture. I can say that the uh, little girl is, uh, sitting uh, uh, on the floor and she is trying to complete uh, her uh, assignment most probably and his brother most, most probably his brother is uh, using his uh, mobile phone and it is only working in front of the window and he's standing throughout the course and you are teaching these kind of students you might be teaching these kind of students so while we are teaching while we are asking something from our students we should be very careful about this. And uh, we should uh, think about some, uh, some other possible situations. And also, yes, this is the post I shared at the beginning of the spring semester. Uh, I received many questions from my students. Uh, how will we evaluate it? What kind of exams we, uh, will we have? Can we go back to school? Or can we, uh, for example, four years students we, uh, shall we visit uh, the schools for teaching practice or courses? But uh, I shared this uh, post on Edmodo. Dear all, for my courses, please do not worry about your grades. Your school uh, may finish a little uh, a year later. For the time being, your main task is stay safe, well and sane. This is the most important task for our students and also for teachers. We have to uh, stay safe, well and sane in this situation. From that perspective, we should keep uh, our learners motivated and also for ourselves, we should also be motivated uh, for our learners. And uh, the other one is facilitator. Another uh, 
role is facilitator. We are always talking about this. We are the facilitators in the classroom and we always facilitate the learning process. We will do our best to facilitate the learning process. But this time, this is somehow different. Uh, the fir first of all, their workload is very heavy. When, when, uh, when we think of the students, we can say that they are following the courses on the screen. And I know that some of my students sit in front of their computer for at least eight hours, nine hours a day, just for listening online courses. And after that, we assign uh, some tasks for the, for the students and they complete these tasks on, on their computers as well. And uh, in the evenings, they also uh, try to complete their projects. They try to complete their tasks. And also, uh, uh, last week, we completed the registration process. And I know that my some of my students are taking uh, 10 courses, 10 different courses. They, they try to follow the online sessions of these courses. They try to uh, complete their projects for their courses. And it is uh, too much for them. In this uh, process, we should guide our students. And most of the students feel uh, they might feel lost uh, in this environment. They don't, for example, they always ask me, uh, I don't know what we are doing in, in other courses uh, because we, there are some online sessions, but I cannot find them. Or there are some tasks, but the deadline is, uh, is not very really, uh, clear. So I couldn't complete the task. I couldn't understand the task. And I couldn't reach the uh, teacher or professor. So in this situation, I think we should guide our students. And uh, at the beginning of the spring semester, I also shared this on Twitter. At the beginning of the spring semester, uh, the teachers thought that students are at home. They are just sitting. So we, we, should, we can give assignments. And there's no midterm exam. There's no final exam. So we thought that uh, students are like this. Like the, like the picture on the left, but actually the case is completely different. The uh, students were, uh, they had many projects, they had many tasks, and uh, actually they were lost. So uh, facilitating uh, this learning process, facilitating uh, this process is very important at this uh, time. And the other one, lifelong learners, uh, uh, as teacher, we, actually, we should be, uh, the professional development has always been important, but it has never been so important. All teachers started to uh, improve themselves in terms of ICT tools. They try new tools. They try to integrate technology in their classes. They had many difficulties. They learned how to use uh, their webcam, how to use online classes. And as a teacher uh, in, this, uh, in this period, uh, we, you should uh, develop yourself professionally and most of the time we are doing this uh, uh, we are learning by doing for example last week uh, i learned how to use group work activities on zoom platform and if we have time i will try this by the way and uh, we learn by doing by experiencing sometimes we have some difficulties sometimes we experience unexpected situations but we learn uh, by doing. And you can follow some educators to inspire you on so social media. This is a uh, quite important for us while we are learning. Uh, you can, if you follow them, they share their experiences, they share some suggestions, they share some links or tools, and it will help you uh, in this process. And there are also some opportunities for professional development, like webinars, like personal posts on social media, and uh, I think Adam Hocam is here, and I really appreciate uh, his students. Uh, for example, ELT Club at Kaiser RGS University, uh, they organized a series of events on Instagram, and the supervisor was uh, Adam Hocam, Adam Akbash from Kaiser RGS University, and they were quite uh, nice talks. They, are, they were great talks, and uh, you shouldn't miss this kind of opportunities. I'm not mentioning this, uh, these events uh, just because I was one of the speakers, but it was quite a uh, fruitful sessions uh, that uh, Adam Ojam organized. And when we are talking about this uh, lifelong learning, the key is keep educating yourself. That's the key for, uh, for teachers. That's the uh, important point 
uh, for lifelong learning. And a good communicator, uh, we should be good communicators because we are using computer mediated communication. Uh, uh, we don't have face to face communication. I, I haven't seen uh, any of my students uh, in the last seven months. I always talk uh, to them on uh, on internet environments, sometimes via WhatsApp, sometimes on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You should always communicate uh, with your students, with their parents, with administrators, with your colleagues. We always communicate on the internet and uh, using computer mediated communication is completely different than face to face communication. And uh, we should know how to use these platforms. There are many, there are different norms uh, while you are communicating on the internet. And also, it is one of the most important points in in terms of communication, you should be clear about the ways of communication. You should say that if uh, you if you don't want to be uh, reached through uh, social media, you can say that this is my email address, and you have you can send me emails. If you send me instant message, uh, I will not reply. You have, but you should be clear about this. There there should be a way uh, for communication, and uh, your your students will be aware of that. And here, uh, here, as I said before, the manners uh, is quite important. While you write something, it can be misunderstood. And sometimes your students write uh, in panic. And sometimes you may uh, call it as impolite, but uh, the intention may not be so. So you should, be, you should be a good communicator in this period. If we were uh, communicating in face-to-face -face platforms, that will be much easier, but this is not the case uh okay i i also check uh check this chat board by the way and the other point the other role is digital literate digital literacy is uh, a bit complex because we don't have a clear definition um this was the article we published at australian journal of educational technology at the beginning of this uh, year and uh while we are writing this, it was quite difficult for us to define what digital literacy is. Some people say that using digital tools is digital literacy. Some people uh, claim that you may use these tools, but actually in this article, we said that digital literacy means that using digital tools and the, using these tools uh, properly uh, for professional and personal benefit. So as a, uh, as a language teacher, we should be digital literate. We should know how to use some tools. And uh, also we should, uh, we should know how to use them uh, in our class, how to integrate the, these tools in our language classes. And for the digital literacy, also we should be critical evaluator of the web 2.0 tool. There are many tools uh, around you on the internet and there are hundreds of tools. While we are talking just right now, new tools are uh, emerged. Some people develop new tools and some uh, tools are uh, published, but you should be very critical. And uh, Chappelle says in 2006, 14 years ago, uh, she says that second language teachers today need to be able to choose, use, and in some cases, refuse technology for their students. We shouldn't accept everything as it is. We should uh, evaluate it Sometimes the tool may not be very useful for your purpose. Uh, it may not be appropriate for your objective. So uh, we should be critical evaluator of these tools. For example, uh, at our university this year, we are using Microsoft Teams uh, for online classes. But when I uh, try to use that tool, I noticed that it's a bit complicated, uh, not only for me, but also for my students. So. Uh, I changed this and I uh, start to use Zoom. And for the learning management system, I, pre uh, I prefer Edmodo. This is not uh, used by other teachers at the institution, but you have to check it. You can refuse the technology uh, for your students' benefit. And digital literacy, again, I am continuing. Uh, uh, I'm going on with the uh, digital literacy. The uh, teachers should be content creators uh, and designers. We all we create the content. Most of the time, uh, people ask uh, whether the uh, teachers will be replaced by technology or not. There is always a good quotation for that. 
teachers will not be replaced by technology, but teachers who use uh, who don't use technology will be replaced by the teachers who use technology effectively. The, te the teachers will be content creators, content de designers, uh, because if we are teaching online classes. Uh, we cannot use most of time. We cannot use worksheets uh, on on papers, hard copies of these worksheets. We need digital materials. Sometimes we should know how to edit a video. You can use, for example, Camtasia uh, for editing your video, or you have to edit the voice uh, audio files. Uh, you can use Audacity, or uh, you can create animations. You can find other tools, but you have to design, you have to create digital materials. This is a, another role that we should uh, keep in mind. And editing and publishing video materials again, we record our sessions. And sometimes before we publishing these video materials, we have to edit these and you should know how to do that. And you should integrate multimedia resources, audio files, uh, photos, uh, video files on, on the internet. You should find them you should uh, edit them and after that you should integrate them in your courses and designing interactive online environments that's also another point and this is one of the most important points in online classes most of the time teachers uh, come to class and start lecturing like a uh, presentation at a conference but there should be some interactive tasks in the uh, in the classroom and while designing this, uh, the teacher should be a good designer. And uh, we shouldn't lecture all the time. We, we, uh, we should have some questions to ask. We should have some activities to share with our friends, with our students. Uh, I call them uh, as uh, friends, sorry. <laughs> and alternative assessment techniques, the, we, should be, uh, we should train ourselves, we should uh, develop ourselves in terms of alternative assessment techniques like e-portfolio, rubrics, creating rubrics, creative tasks rather than multiple choice tests. Uh, some teachers are uh, very happy with the multiple choice tests because it's easy to create. But uh, in online classes, it is, I, can, uh, I can claim that multiple choice tests is impossible to control in, uh, in online platforms. There are many factors and uh, you, you cannot uh, control uh, these multiple choice tests in online settings. If you are using this kind of test, you can use them for uh, for self assessment. Your students can uh, solve these multiple choice tests and they can see whether they learn the topic or not. You, you can use e portfolios uh, and also uh, a well developed rubrics, and the students should know how they, uh, how they are evaluated. This is quite important. Uh, for the creative task, it is uh, based on your creativity. Uh, for example, in uh, our community service course, we uh, ask our students to record their voices and uh, read some books, read uh, stage uh, readers at different stages, and uh, record them. And they will they created audio books. In my uh, linguistics course, for example, I ask my students to ask some questions and. Uh, answers to these questions, and uh, I didn't want them to ask uh, some definition questions, but I I want them to write some explanation questions and compare and contrast questions. This was also quite effective for my students, uh, as far as I observed. Uh, by the way, I also check uh, the real class setting. Okay, we will. I, I will see the questions uh, after the session. Uh, Okay, and digital literacy. Again, you should be a technician. Uh, teachers deal with technical problems for themselves and for their students. While you are teaching uh, in the classroom, one of your students may ask you, uh, my audio is not working uh, or I cannot see the uh, shared screen. So you have to help them and you have to help their technical uh, problems. But while doing that, just keep calm. This is quite acceptable. This is uh, this is very normal in online sessions. There might be some problems. The internet uh, uh, may may not work, or the electricity uh, uh, may not be available. So 
uh, or the internet may uh, may be very limited. So this is quite acceptable. Just uh, if you can help your student or if you can solve your problem, you can solve it. But if you cannot, this is not a big problem in online classes. And the other one, the other point is organization of the courses from beginning to end. Uh, Actually, we were doing this in face-to-face -face classes at the beginning of the semester. We uh, design our syllabus, and after that, we in the syllabus we have the evaluation, we have the uh, course materials, co uh, content, our objectives. But in online settings, this is more important. First of all, the schedule of the synchronous online meetings is very important. Our students should know when they meet online, how long they meet online. For example, for one hour, for two hours. Uh, and the uh, starting time and the finish time should be uh, determined before the session. And the content of the asynchronous content, sometimes we share our content asynchronously and uh, we should decide what we will share with our students, what kind of material should be uh, shared. And uh, also the other one is evaluation criteria. Okay, the, uh, most of the time the students are uh, are confused they, uh, or they worry about their grades and they should be clear about their evaluation criteria. It shouldn't be a surprise for the, for the students. And flexibility, if you are teaching online, you should have a plan B, uh, plan C and D as well. Uh, plan B will not be enough. Uh, you will have two or three of, and also maybe in some situations that may be for plans for the uh, for your courses and your course content should be flexible. Uh, you can you should change it at any time of the uh, semester. For example, nowadays, uh, as I heard, uh, the politicians and the policymakers are talking about opening uh, universities. And uh, what happens if they say next week we are starting school? So you should have a flexible plan and you should uh, make some adaptations. Uh, as soon as possible. And sharing course recording and materials, you should always share your course recordings and materials because your, your students may have uh, limited facilities, they may not attend your courses, they may miss your courses. Uh, so uh, you should share the course recording as soon as you finish the course. And also you should share your materials as well. And uh, you will need some regular announcements uh, in face-to-face -face classrooms, in uh, in the old version of uh, our education, regular, uh, regularity is very important for the students. They receive announcements regularly. When they go to school, they receive the announcements. But in online platforms, this is not very regular. And, and most of the time, teachers are, uh, get lost because of that reason. They cannot follow the announcements. They cannot uh, follow their tasks. They don't know what to do. Uh, and you should... Uh, if you are using a learning management system, you can schedule your announcements at the beginning of the semester. For example, every Monday morning, I uh, publish uh, an announcement. You can use this kind of organization for your announcements. And instructions is also another point. Uh, you are not teaching face to face. So uh, most of the time, if your students have some questions, and uh, they will not be able to ask you uh, if you write clear instructions for the task, it will be uh, much better for your learners. And punctuality is important. Uh, if, you are, if you are teaching face-to-face -face classes, if you are not in the classroom, your students may visit your office and they can check you. But in online settings, uh, they are ready at the time of the uh, course. And most of the time, you should start at a, at a specific uh, and uh, very punctually. And uh, as I said, you should finish your course uh, when it's finished. You, uh, you shouldn't keep them too long. And uh, that's uh, one of the most important points again guard for the learners for the online security. And uh, be aware of the security issues. For example, yesterday in all GeoJumps uh, presentation, there were some people, we are all educators, we are, uh, we are adults, and we also. Uh, exposed to these kind of uh, cyber attacks, and uh, there are some hack, hack accounts or hack sessions, and uh, you should be ready for that. You should 
drive your learners against these kind of uh, people. I don't know why they are doing this. I don't know uh, how they enjoy this, but they are doing that. If they find your meeting ID, if they find your passcode, then they will try to invade your uh, classroom and they really enjoy it. I don't know why. Uh, and you should keep your classrooms as private as possible. And you should be ready uh, how you can uh, uh, overcome these problems uh, if there's a, if your course is hacked or if your uh, if your account is hacked, you should be ready for that. And for the final remarks, I think we uh, we will have time for uh, breakout rooms. As for the final remarks, I can say that uh, if the teachers adopt these new roles and be aware of the requir requirements of online platforms. They might be able to, able to maximize student potential. These are very critical. The being a motivator, facilitator, a digital literate uh, organizer, uh, guard, uh, protector of their students. If you uh, adopt these new roles, it will be uh, good for you. And it seems that online education will be inevitable in the following uh, years, regardless of the pandemic. Uh, all, if we go back to schools, I'm sure that there will be some online uh, sections and the learning context will not be limited to the physical classroom settings. So the teachers should be aware of the demands of online ed education and continuous professional development. I can say that uh, no matter we go back to schools, no matter we uh, go back to all days, it will not be the same because we know how online platforms work, how uh, how we can benefit from these uh, new platforms. So there will always be an online component of our courses. And uh, for, uh, for the contact info, I can share them at the end of the session as well. Uh, okay, I will, by the way, I will read the comments. But before that, I will, uh, uh, how many participants do we have here? Uh, 105. Okay, we can divide this group into 20 groups, uh, 20 groups, and in that group, uh, could you please uh, share your ideas? Could you uh, please uh, have some discussions about uh, which goal is the most important one uh, for your learning? I would like to ask you, or if you have any additional roles uh, in this online uh, environment in distance education, I will divide the participants into 20 groups you will be directed to uh, different groups. And after that, you will share your ideas. You, you can use your microphone, you can use chat board. And after that, we will come back here, okay? Uh, if it is uh, clear, I will create breakout rooms. And also we will try this. Now you will receive a link. Uh, if you click on that link, you will, uh, you will be assigned to a new group. Okay, and uh, the question is, uh, I want you to, Share your ideas. I want I want you to talk about which role is the most important one in online settings, and uh, if you ha do you have any additional roles for teachers. Yes, I created. Yes, uh, I think uh, you have uh, received a link for that. Don't worry, you will not be lost. Okay, yes. Here I can follow the participants. By the way, they are living one by one. And if they are not following the se uh, session, <laughs> they will not understand what's going on. Okay, please click on the link. Okay, I'm checking the groups. In group six, we need Arkan, Asla Altuntaş, Nesli Çiğdem Saral. Okay. Yes, I'm checking this uh, session. Let us switch on. Okay, this is 
yeah, small groups. One of the other. <laughs> Good. It was really illuminating. I have noticed a few questions, but mm. it might be a bit difficult to answer them all right now. Everyone has your email address. Hmm? Mm -hmm. yeah. By the way, I, I will also check the questions. Uh, oh, many people wrote <laughs> questions. How can we handle that? I mean, let's say five more minutes. I will share my, I will share my screen. Uh, new share yes. the screen. Can you see this breakout rooms page? Now, uh -huh. share the screen, the whole screen. Yes, here it is. Here we have the breakout rooms. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Bonjo hocam şeyi görebiliyor musunuz? No. Hmm, o zaman size göstereyim. Hocam şimdi bunu nasıl yapalım? Birazdan kapatıp birinci odaya şey yapacağım. Hemen iki, iki dakika sonra e, benim de herhalde 45 dakikamda olmasına iki dakika var. Şey tamam. soracağım. E, hemen e, son bir dakikanız diye gruplara mesaj atacağım. Sonra tamam. onlar gelecekler. Sonra gelip burada bir iki şey ekleyebilirsek. Herkes şey yazacaktır muhtemelen. Hey, yok hocam ben yanlışlıkla gruptan çıktım. Oraya tekrar nasıl dönebiliyorum? Ee, konuşan kim? Esma. Şey adım yanlış farklı Ay, yazıyor. Diye yazıyor. Aynen. <gülüyor> Çünkü şey adımı yazmayı unutmuşum da. Dört numaralı odadaydım. <gülüyor> Çıktım yanlış. Veriyorum. Gidebilirsin. Okey. <gülüyor> Ben hemen bir gruba bakıp geleyim hocam. Status with John. Status with John. Sedat Hocam, can you hear me? You're muted. Evet, hocam şimdi çağırdım son 60 saniyeniz deyip geliyorum. Teşekkür ederim. Bunu kullanmak için evet. daha önce ama çok keyifli hocam. Çok kesinlikle. kesinlikle Size çok kullanın. teşekkür etmek istiyorum. Şöyle bir şey olabilir mi hocam? Hostlu, e, sizinle hostluğunuz yani host olarak, co-host olarak bulunuyorum ya. Hı hı. Ee, ben ne... hostluğu bırakayım. Bırak Buyur yok. Bizde hostluk kalsın. Ben teşekkür etsem bir dakikaya yan tarafa geçsem olur mu? Ya da beraber bitirirsek evet. o zaman da olabilir. Peki nasıl isterseniz hocam. Yani e, bit, zaten bitti benim. 45 dakika tam da iyi kullanmışım şeyi. Süper. Eğer herhangi bir şey varsa, kötü yorum varsa 30 saniye sonra gruplar kapanıyor. Hepsi bütün tamam. katılımcılar buraya geri dönüyor. Herkes geri geliyor. Tamam. Aynen. Ben şu anda şey de paylaşayım. Şu kontak bilgilerimi. Eğer sorusu olan varsa çok şey tutmadan buradan da şey yapabiliriz.
şu anda. Yes, I think uh, everyone is here. We are back. Yes, we are there. Okay, okay. Uh, I think we didn't lose anyone. Yes, uh, this this kind of activities, this kind of breakout uh, room activity, for example, I learned this just uh, last week. So, and I I'm trying to use this in my classes, and it's quite helpful for the learners. You can design groups, and the learners uh, are assigned to this group automatically. So uh, they don't. For example, if you are using this group work activity in your classroom, most of the time the uh, learners uh, contact with their close friends, but this is automatically and they can uh, create uh, create groups with other people. That's uh, great for this uh, point. And uh, these are my contact info uh, on all, all social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can find me as Sakayo Glu. Uh, my email address is sakayo.gmail.com and my web uh, site is sedatakayo.com. You can, uh, I, I think we don't have too much time. So if you have any questions, you can send me emails and uh, I will leave the floor to Georgia as the moderator, as the chair of this session. Thank you. Especially this breakout rooms. Now, I'd like to thank you again for your I mean, enlightening uh, presentation and closing it because I need to move to room one for closing remarks. And I'd like to invite everyone else if you have time because you have spent two days with us, with each other. And thank you. If you're, uh, I mean, if you have time, if you're available, Let's move on to room one for closing remarks. Thank you. Okay. It will be 10 minutes uh, late, uh, later. Bonjour, John. Just now, John. Just now. Okay. Okay. The, okay. Then we will leave to the uh, next room. I will stop the recording, by the way.